for all the poets that have shown up tonight and stayed. No magpie put dust in my eye. Unless Maggie's dip chest deep into the sea, where sheltering ribs fail to break the sound, your voice rushes inland and native flowers grow ears. It is not crying. Thawing inside is different. Polar caps melting is not merely the earth weeping. Or maybe fog is the reflection of sleepwalking teardrops. Maybe I cry. Just will not admit it. I make fog when we are apart. When your body twitches to cough in another room, my chest tightens and my diaphragm aches. My gut raw throat rages like a storm of cayenne dust. My world won't stop swirling. Then I, I feel the fog. It drops just beyond retina and coasts and coats the leaves of lemon trees. It kamikaze dies beneath the bricks in your backyard. The fog even breaks for the loo. It dies beneath the rim, screaming, Flush me to Tasmania! <laughs> Covered in fog, my sheets ring out like clouds. No magpie steals my voice in October. When I open a dry mouth, Croaking answers its song. It alone knows what I'm trying to say. I love you audibly. It alone knows too many hours apart led to this thawing. That obtuse croak forecast the ship hull creaking to dock remains. A broken note confession joining foams on the sea. Tonight, there will be a lone apparition walking on water. Fall. This is called I Am a Selkie in the Sea, and I apologise to IQ, who's, who's I heard it like several times. Oh, this is quite recent. The sky is shards of shattered mirrors. Sheets, planes, cleave, grey, crash and tumble. The brown old face of the land is creased with age, furrowed with thought. Within the whistling vortex where meet the land, the sea, the sky, I sit atop a grey forehead, pushed up through polished fragments of glass, and my eyes rove out over the grey corrugated steel of the sea. The shrieking sun implodes and dies, giving up its gold and its crimson, crimson blood to the horizon leaving triumphant the stuporous and sluggish moon, who heaves herself laggardly through the sky, hanging above the horizon like a swollen, pendant yellow breast. My tongue teases out the oyster stars from their squid ink gravy bed. I slow the blueness, slow the blackness. I slow my heart to the fall of the waves and wait. As it rises, the moon becomes the crystal lens, a round mirror that reflects our first meeting. I, water rocked in my rough old wooden boat, white paint flaking from long sun. You slicing through the sea, your body lean and black, daughter of the waves. But when you lifted your heat, head, breaking through boat's shadow, I saw the woman in the depth of your dark brown eyes. I am calling you now, dream of distant Atlantis. Rise from your limpid home, rise and come. I should explain that a selkie is somebody that wears a seal's skin during the day and then sometimes comes onto the shore as a person. A multiple wake of serpent ripples approaches the shore and then you are there rising from the dark polished cotton of the sea. Water streams from your body in foam and shards of glass. Your flipper grip is cold and wet as you reach out for me to haul you, magnificent fish from the shining black mirrors of the sea. You make me turn, your, turn my back as you doff your seal clothing. The sheer fine fabric rustles as you slip your gown of fur down from your shoulders. Leave your skin here atop this round guardian of stone. It will be safe, for none but we two will dare the midnight moon. Put your hand in mine and walk with me, my love, along the narrow strip of sand, the thin interface between your world and mine. Your naked form a chiaroscuro of midnight and shadowed blue, twisting on your skin as you walk beside me. We will pass among the flocculent salmon stains of the intercourse of sea and shore. 
the upwelling water already filling our footprints, where the sand is firm and damp. Come, run with me. Laugh and exclaim in wonder at how the dry sand is like powder. Kick it up in fluffy clouds. Shift it through, sift it through your fingers. Fling it in the air and laugh at how it falls. Come, love, for the night is short. The moon already falls. I have prepared a bower for us amid the swollen leaves of the succulent plants behind the peaks of the dunes. Come to where I have spread cloak and sheepskin. Come to the natural soft hollow beneath, behind the heads of the sand. Lay you down, O oh, lay in naked glory, your hairless head and hairless body spread. I shall gaze into those eyes brown and square pupiled, uncanny, your fine and loving gaze. I shall kiss the pearl shells of your eyelids. I am like a bulging belly filled with the sight and song of you, yet at the same time empty as with long famine craving you. As we lay together the coals of our desire heat from dull glowing red to the sudden blaze of white. My member swells as if it would burst or split the skin like a sausage, scorched too suddenly in passion's fire. It is an eel that pushes aside the pink curtains of your bower, pushing away the seaweed, seeking your cave's long-kept secrets. That cave suddenly wet as if filled by an inrushing tide, yet hot, hot as your arms that wrap around my head. And yet your, your tongue is cold as a silver fish beneath the sea, and salty too, as our mouths meet and merge. We are one, born like fiery phoenix from the exultant furnace of our lust, unified and in that hot death made fu fully alive. Yet finer still and fairer is this hour when you lay beside me in our shell hollow of sand. Your fingers trace the curved lines of my cheekbones, your eyes dark with wonder and sadness. Your tongue I see is small and sharp, pink as a rabbit's. Tears trickle down your cheeks, it flickers forth to lap them up. You speak to me in long liquid words I do not know, some secret rolling tongue far from under the sea. Your fingers curl my beard into little ringlets, and you pinch and laugh to see me wince. I see the pale moon twin glistening in your eyes, but now it disappears, and I know that the time for us is over. You take my face between both palms and kiss me on the eyelids. Merciful sleep takes me so that I do not see you go, so that I cannot force you, hold you to stay, nor learn the dark sea secret by which you become seal again. I am a sailor on the shore, and you are a selkie in the sea. And though I shall look out, look out and call over the blue metal rustling silk of the waves, I know that you can visit me here no more, that all the time we were given was just this one hour. Yet that morning will come when I shall face my bow outward, turn the prow of my boat to that mysterious horizon, and the grey chill of darkness give way to the dawn, when into the searing blue infinitude our golden sun shall rise, singing. <laughs>